Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good today and thanks for joining in and checking this video out, man. I really appreciate it. Um, early in the morning here, getting ready to head out to Tabor Rock Lake for a uh, on the water lesson, a fish the moment on the water lesson today. Should be some should be some good fishing down there, man. When you, the water's starting to warm up a little bit, air's starting to warm up, and um, it's really nice to get out there and not just be freezing cold in the morning like I've been all winter with these uh, fish the moment on the water trips. But hey, today um, I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to show you guys something that uh, some of you guys might know about it. So probably a lot of people don't. It's just, it's a lure category that doesn't have a lot of notoriety. Um, it's got some geographical, uh, you know, areas of the country that it works a little bit better than others. And um, this is going to be a really good bait to include in your arsenal uh, starting this spring and moving really forward all the way through summer and fall. It's a really productive water. A uh, really productive bait anytime this water temperature starts to get into the 50s. So we'll get on to that here. But hey, before we get started here, just wanted to remind you guys one more time that uh, this Thursday, um, you know, Johnny and I have our advanced jig fishing seminar. Uh, you can sign up for that by going to fishinthemoment.com. This is going to be a three hour seminar from 6 to 9 p.m. on Thursday night. We're going to cover everything, man. Johnny's going to cover all his jig secrets for offshore fishing. I'm going to cover give you guys all my shallow water jig secrets um, so you can sign up uh, to that on fishthemoment.com. I think there's, Johnny said we've had five or six more openings left so you can uh, try to get that get in on today and join us. And um, also uh, tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday night, we have our regular uh, Fish the Moment uh, podcast Fish the Mo on the Fish the Moment live YouTube channel, largest live YouTube fishing channel in the country. Come and join us uh, tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Okay, let's get into this. Uh, bait that I'm talking about, the secret bait. Um, the bait that I'm talking about is a, what I call a zero crank. Um, this this is a Mega Bass Zero Griffin right here. A lot of people are probably more familiar with the man's uh, Baby One Minus or One Minus. These baits are unique because you can see the lips on them. They're just real tiny diminutive lips. And these baits are designed uh, to run, you know, less than a foot deep. And you know, this is a lure category. I don't, I don't talk about this a lot because, man, there are certain situations where this is just deadly, and it's deadly on good fish, on, you know, the three pound plus fish. A lot of people, when they're talking about, you know, the zero cranks, they they tend to relate it to fishing around shallow grass. You know, the baby one minus got a lot of fame fishing around shallow grass. That's probably where it's most famous for, um, and it is an excellent. Uh, you know, lure choice for that conditions. Anytime you've got shallow milfoil, shallow hydrilla, um, and stained water, the combination of that, it works really good around shallow grass. But one of the, there's two different situations that I use this bait that a lot of people don't use that I'm going to talk about. The first is just covering water on banks. You know, when those fish start to move up shallow, when they're, and, and you know there's a lot of fish in that three foot zone, and you have water visibilities that on my, you know, best conditions for water visibility is under two feet and you know there's a lot of fish shallow and the fish are biting shallow moving baits like swim jigs, you know, spinner baits, you know, buzz baits, that type of stuff. You can come in there with these zero cranks like the Mega Bass Zero Griffin, one minus anything like Storm Subwort, I think it's got one. And you can cover those same areas. You can, it's a great bait to throw around, lay down, you know, logs, stumps, dock corners, just on rocky banks, any type of stuff like that. Um, it's one of my favorite baits to fish because when you get a bite on one of these things, it's basically like a topwater lure. I mean, the, I like to fish at work, sort of waking the top. Um, and when they hit it, they just come up and just smoke it. It's unbelievable. But like I said, you, there's a lot of situations you can use these in besides just fishing shallow grass. So the key on that, this thing, is you want to look for super shallow water and flat banks. These are the things, these are the scenarios that work best. If you get like, say, in the back of a cove or the back of a creek where you've got less than two foot of water visibility, um, and say your boat's in five foot of water and you're cast into the bank and you're only casting in like a foot or two of water, this is when this bait shines. And like I said, it'll work on bare banks, rocky banks, it'll work around any wood targets, anything that you'd fish, a shallow crankbait, spinnerbait, chatterbait, that, that type of stuff in there. Um, the other situation that works really good, what a lot of people don't know about, is smallmouth. Smallmouth will smoke these things. The clearwater smallmouth, like up north, 
Um, when you're when you're on any type of a smallmouth bite in a northern smallmouth area, these zero crankbaits up there are excellent for those type of situations. Big smallmouth will annihilate it. The uh, the yeah no the biggest actually the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught on Lake Champlain came on this uh, mega bass zero griffin in practice when you're up there. I caught one that was close to six pounds up there on it. So uh, it's been a really good bait for me all year. A couple of different tips as far as setting up and retrieve on this because the way that you fish this bait has a lot to do with getting bites on it or not. <clears throat> if you throw this bait out there and you just try to just crank it in like a normal retrieve, you won't hardly get a bite on it. These baits, these zero cranks, are all about speed and reaction bites from the fish. They're not designed to be fished slow. They're not designed to be fished medium. They're designed to be fished fast, even in the springtime of the year, even like right, you know, when that water temperature starts to get in the mid to upper 50s. When you're dealing with these fish that are in super shallow water, there's something about this bait burning through the water that just that creates their, the ultimate re reaction strike. And what you want to do is you want to throw it out there um, I usually use a seven foot, um, some type of a fairly soft tip on it. You know, since you're reeling it fast, you don't want a real st stiff tip. You want a tip that has a lot of forgiveness on it. Even like a glass composite rod. Um, I use the Mega Bass Swing Fire, which is a sort of a composite rod. It's got a soft tip on it. And when that fish hits it, burning it, you know, you've got a little bit of flex on there, a little bit to get to, to you know, get those fish to eat it better. But throw it out there, keep the rod tip high, and you want to try to burn it where the bait is just waking the surface. This, these baits will actually, they'll throw a big wake behind them. It's almost like a wake bait. I guess you could call it, you know, some type of a, it fishes like a topwater wake bait, but you don't want to hold the rod tip low because you don't want this bait to get deep. You want it to stay high in the water column. That's when they're going to bite it. And that combination of speed and keeping this bait high in the water column is, is what generates a strike on this bait. One of the reasons a lot of people have problems and these aren't one of their favorite baits is they simply try to fish it too deep. They try to throw it out there, they keep the rod tip low, they may use a medium to slow retrieve on it and they just won't get any bites on it. So the way that you fish this bait around that cover is really key to success on it. Colors, I mix them up between, you know, some type of a bright chartreuse if the water's really dirty, like if I'm fishing under 12 inches of visibility, <coughs> And if it's closer to that two foot range, I like to go to some type of a shad pattern with it. <clears throat> and I'll, plus I'll mix it up too on the daylight conditions. If, if it's a really windy day and cloudy, and even if the water's a little bit clear, I'll go maybe to the chartreuse. Um, but you just sort of have to, to get a feel for what the fish want based upon the sunlight conditions, water clarity, that type of stuff. But most of the time I'm using it on fairly heavy line. I like to use them on like 17 to 20 pound test line. Again, it just helps the bait to stay higher in the water column. And I'm not worried about line size because the fish can't even see it because it's an inch under the surface. And uh, man, it's just a killer. I I've had so many really good days on it. I've caught them on these zero cranks all over the country. I mean, I've caught them good at Lake Dardanelle in Arkansas with it. I've caught them on all the Northern smallmouth lakes on it. I've caught them in some of the Eastern lakes. I've caught them really good, like on the Potomac River. It's a great tidal water bait if you guys fish tide water. And don't let the size fool you guys. I mean, these are little baits, but I'm telling you, the good fish will hit them. I mean, the big fish will really hit these things. One other uh, uh, piece of advice I can give you on this is I don't have it rigged up like this, but in, to get better, these things are tight. So, you know, you get a lot of times you'll have a hook style on it. One of the things you can do to actually get the baits to wobble harder I don't care if you're using the Mega Bass or you're using the Mans, either one. I just don't have them rigged up like this. Is take the back hook off and just put one oversized hook on the front right here. Like, a you know, something that's a lot bigger than it probably should be. That way, you know, when you take that weight off the back of the bait, it actually makes this bait, you don't have the drag back there, so this bait wobbles harder from the front. And also the oversized hook, you know, it's so small, they get the whole bait when they get it. And if you have one big oversized treble on there, most of the time you don't have any problem getting it. Another thing I'll do um, on the end here, sometimes I'll put two or three split rings on it to set that treble back a little bit more. And I found this to be really effective, especially if they're swatting at the bait and hitting like that. Because a lot of times on this bait, you get a lot of fish that come up and just boil on it and don't get it. And normally when you're doing that, you're fishing the bait a little too slow. 
or you got the wrong color or something like that. But anyway, give it a try guys. Man, as soon as that water temperature starts getting in the upper 50s and you know that those fish are shallow and you're catching them shallow, you know, just try, you know, some of these zero cranks, man. I guarantee you'll add it in your arsenal. I've got a, uh, let me see if I can find them here. I've got a whole box of them right here. This whole box, zero cranks. This thing is completely full, as you can see, of zero cranks. So you can tell how much that I like to use them. You know, they're just a, one of my, they're just one of the funnest baits that you can have to fish. It's basically like fishing a topwater. So anyway, that's today's tip, guys. Appreciate it. Um, like I said, we're getting real close to that 25,000 subscriber mark. Get, get a, Solar Bass giving away a pair of sunglasses, and we're giving away some Bridgeford beef jerky when you hit it. Probably the next day, probably the next day we're going to hit it, you know, probably maybe today. So just to be eligible, just please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, maybe you got a chance to win that. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Much appreciated, and we'll be back soon with another one. See you.